Tracy Momi Reads. I am back again. Today, instead of a book review, I'm going to be paying homage to an African-American author who is like my go-to author. I mean, he pretty much set the standard in the uh, early to late 90s of the type of books I read and stories that I gravitated towards. Um, I did a similar uh, tribute last year during Black History Month for uh, Terry McMillan. So you can check the archives for that. But but today I am talking about none other than Mr. Eric Jerome Dickey. The thing that I really loved about Eric Jerome Dickey, like when he stepped on the scene in 1996 with his first book, Sister, Sister, for him to be a man, I really felt like he had an accurate voice for black women. Like his characters were smart. They were beautiful. They were flawed. <laughs> uh, in a lot of cases, they were very successful and just really trying to navigate their way through the world, through relationships with their men, with their friends, with their family. And the way that he wrote about us, basically, us Black women, it was with so much reverence and so much grace. Um, a lot of times, I feel like from a male's point of view, and I know women do it too, but we're, we're talking about Mr. Dickey here, okay? Um, but sometimes the negative things that maybe men have experienced in relationships or with their family members, that kind of comes across in their art. I mean, just listen to some of the rap records, why don't you? Uh, but he had such a reverence and respect, you know, for women and told these beautiful stories um, where these women were allowed to be flawed. They were allowed second chances. They were allowed redemption. And I just couldn't get enough. You know, he was really one of my favorite authors back in um, back in the 90s. And his stories and I, and I know you have to change with the time you have to go with um you know, what is uh, bankable, what is profitable, you know, what is popular. And I feel like at some point, his stories took a turn that I I really wasn't interested in those kind of stories. Um, I tried, I tried, but I guess I was so used to the Eric Jerome Dickey, you know, that had started with these great stories about relationships and friendships and things. And when they kind of took more of a grittier turn, I mean, I, I've read books like that, but I, it just didn't seem authentic coming from him. I don't know why. I don't know why if, it, if it's because like the way he, you know, he had aged, obviously like we all had from the time that he had wrote those books. And then it's like he was going into a new kind of area. And I'm like, is this like realistic that a man, you know, in his 40s will be writing about these young drug dealers or thugs or assassins and all this stuff. And, you know, as a writer, I never would want somebody limiting what I write about, you know, because I feel like, you know, if you feel like you have that story in you or that you can tell a good story, do it. Hey, go for it. Go for it. But it was just a no for me. I just, I just didn't like some of his later work, you know, that he had. Uh, when I was reorganizing my shelf, I noticed something. He, I have more books by Eric Jerome Dickey than any other author on my shelf. And ironically, that it's followed close, uh, close second with Terry McMillan. This was a um, like an anthology or a compilation. And this one, I was lucky enough to obtain his autograph. So this one I really treasure because, you know, uh, he passed away last year, so I was able to get an autograph from one of my favorite authors. That's like kind of like a bucket list thing, I think, for readers. Yeah, I'm still going. <laughs> and this was uh, like a holiday kind of short that he did that was pretty cool. 
and I was lucky enough also, this was his very last release and his uh, publisher, like they reached out to me, I guess because, you know, I was posting a lot of stuff on Instagram and with the hashtags, I was able to get this one from Dutton, yeah, Dutton Books. They gave me a complimentary copy, which I still have not read. This one, oh my God, this is like, it's not, I mean, I've read books with more pages than this. We're like at 530 maybe. But I want to, you know, I, I am going to get to this hopefully this year, but I have not started it. But yeah, I have a big stack of Eric Jerome Dickey books, more than any other author. And um, they're like my prized possession. I have like purged a lot of books over the years. And I just, I cannot see myself. I don't even know if I'll reread any of these books, but I'm not getting rid of them. <laughs> you know, that just, no, I'm not getting rid of them. We're going to keep these babies. We're going to keep all of them. So anyway, I just think that, I don't know that he got the accolades that some of his contemporaries did um, because he was a phenomenal writer, you know, and um, there, there were a lot of people who had their books turned into TV shows or they got made into movies and I feel like he has some really good stories that deserved also to kind of be told in a different medium and I don't know like if, why that you know if he had never been given the opportunity if he never wanted to do that with his work or what but I feel like his stories just like I mentioned with Terry McMillan like I, I feel like she was the boilerplate that she wrote the template on girlfriend type stories, you know, group of friends um, going through these life adventures together. I feel like Terry McMillan was the godmother of that. And in the same vein, I feel like when it comes to relationship books that Eric Jerome Dickey, you know, I feel like he was the godfather of that. He, I mean, a lot of his early work, that's what it focused on um, was relationships and um, you know, how people overcame things that maybe happened where there was an infidelity, a sickness, somebody lied, somebody, you know, did this, that, or the third, and how maybe they either love that person enough to work through it or they love themselves enough to move move on, you know. But he he crafted some really, really good stories and um hopefully he knew how much his words meant to a lot of people, even if, you know, outwardly, you know, <clears throat> as far as like having books made into movies. I know he won a couple of uh, awards, like NAACP did acknowledge him, but hopefully he knew before his passing that his words, you know, and his stories had touched so many people. And that's, that's the thing that you hope for as an author, when you're writing a story, you know, for me personally, if it just resonates with one person, I mean, obviously you want to sell more than that, but when I get, you know, one or two people just, you know, either writing reviews or, or reaching out on social media, telling me that, oh my God, that was such a good story. I really enjoyed it. When's the next one? That, that is, it's fuel to the fire of writing um, because nobody wants to spend time. I mean, I would write regardless, whether I published it is another story, but writing is just food for my soul. But <clears throat> when you write and it actually resonates, that type of feedback, it just really does something for an author. So that's why if you're an avid reader, it's so important, um, especially if you enjoy the book. You know, if you really enjoy the story, um, tell somebody about it leave the author a, a review on Amazon or on their website and let them know. I'm willing to bet that the majority of authors, I don't care how many reviews they get, those positive reviews, I'm willing to bet that they read them or their people tell them about them. And like I said, th that way you kind of know that, okay, this is, this is something, I'm on to something here. People are really liking these stories that I share about mother and daughters. People are really liking these stories that I share about people fly fishing, whatever it is, you know, so that we know that we're on the right track. We're in the right lane and, and we're reaching the people that we're supposed to reach. So yeah, if you have not read an Eric Jerome Dickey book, 
don't know what you're doing with your life. I really just don't. Uh, my favorite books are the books that, you know, he had that came out earlier in his career. But I have heard that a lot of people really, you know, liked the, uh, some of the grittier stuff that he did. And that was their introduction to him. So, uh, the, like the latter part of his life when he was writing those type of books, he had developed a new audience, you know, and that's the thing, that's the mark of a, a really talented writer that you can sustain a career as long as he did. I mean, we're talking about somebody whose first book came out in 1996 and he was still selling books before he died in 2021. That's, that's a long career. So regardless to my personal feelings about, you know, the direction that his writing took, he was still selling books and had a new fan base of people who appreciated his work. And, you know, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. So yeah, I would love to know your favorite Eric Jerome Dickey book, if you have one. You know, if you have read his books uh, and you've read more than one of his books, like, let me know in the comments, like, what's your favorite Eric Jerome Dickey book? I think mine, I mean, obviously I have all of these books and I really enjoyed all of them, but uh, Friends and Lovers and Sister, Sister, like his first two books, those still hold a very special place in my heart. So just giving Mr. Dickey some well-deserved recognition and you know, even a year after his death, his name is still being spoken. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please take the opportunity. Do it now. Do it now. Go ahead and subscribe and make sure you hit that post notification bell so that you don't miss any of these riveting reviews that I have planned. Thanks again, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye.